Hello, welcome back to the Art Channel with myself, Grace Adam, and my colleague, Joshua White. In this film from Houghton Hall, we're going to be looking at the permanent sculpture collection. Throughout the grounds of Houghton Hall are contemporary and modern sculptures in the formal gardens and in the wooded areas. So we're standing in front of a James Terrell piece from 1970 and it's part of a series uh, called Shallow Space. This one's called Raymar Magenta and it's an installation and it's this kind of cool violet light which emanates from the wall. So it's quite a sort of otherworldly piece. Washes over you, doesn't mm. it? It's very ambient, very soft, quite mesmerising. And James Turrell is consistently interested in the quality of light itself and our perception of it. And of course it's not an object, it's not really a material, it's not tangible. It's entirely received kind of uh, in the eye and in the brain. But nevertheless a lot of questions arise out of it in terms of you know, our relationship to uh, the light and its source. I mean, he talks about light being strong stuff. This is a primal response we have. We need light, so we respond in a very sort of ancient way, I suppose. And it is mesmerising. It's on one level, it's very, very simple, but you do, as you say, get kind of enveloped in this light, and it has a again, it slows you down. It has a kind of strange, mm. slow pace to it. Very simple, but very ancient response to it. I mean, it is contemplative, isn't mm. it? Some of the James Turrell light works change on a cycle, but this is very still. You can see that the magenta is consistent, but it keeps kind of uh, pulsing out into this sort of dark space here in the old stables mm. at Houghton Hall, which has been adapted to display this very theatrical work. It's odd, isn't it, because it, it taps into different traditions, this idea of a light sculpture, like you say, it's not a material, but it's something to make art from. And coming out of a kind of minimalist, conceptual um, background, 1960s, 1970s, so you get this very quiet piece of work. You have to bring a lot to it, in a way. And it demands a kind of um, investment of time. You can't just sort of walk past mm. it. It's not a sculpture on a plinth or on the floor. You are, in a sense, instructed to sit at the back of the room and just to take in the work in your field of vision. I think it's no accident that Terrell was brought up as a Quaker. So there is this sense of, not religious, but spiritual contemplation. You have to be quiet, you have to give it time, you have to be with the piece. So we've made this walk through the garden, up this ramp, to this chamber that James Turrell has created and he calls it Skyscape Seldom Seen. And you enter a space that feels almost like a tomb, something archaeological, mm. like something you might find in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. And your gaze is directed upwards to this aperture opening to the sky with this hard edge. And the effect is really strange, isn't it? Because it brings the sky very close mm. above your head until perhaps a bird flies by and mm. then again the, uh, the distance is readjusted. It's quite claustrophobic. I'm used to having windows to look out at the environment with. I haven't got any of those. So as you say, your eyes are directed up to this very, today, very bright square mm. of sky. And it really does play with your perception because it's very hard to read. Uh, I can't quite believe that it's the sky. I feel as if it's something much closer, like a roof or a ceiling. And it's incredibly simple. It's the thing you did as a kid. You lay on the grass and looked at the clouds go by and it's a kind of formalised version of that. Unlike Raymar Magenta, uh, which uses entirely artificial light and colour, this is entirely dependent upon ambient natural effects in the sky as it subtly changes in time during the course of the day. And I've seen, visited before, two years ago, when I saw the light being withdrawn mm. at dusk at the end of the day. Now it's more constant and it's very bright, mm. isn't it? It's kind of intense, um, but uh, it's, it's entrancing mm. too. 
and it does slow us down, it makes us contemplate, it makes us think, it makes us stop. We're asked to focus on something seemingly very, very simple that we're surrounded by every, you know, we are in the sky every day, but we don't look. So just the act of framing something makes you look at it. It just brings it into focus. Rather like Raymar Magenta, there is no solid object. It is not one kind of artwork we're looking at, but rather the artist is staging this experience reconnecting mm. us to the natural world and these kind of sort of natural patterns mm. in, the, in the sky and the, the passage of the sun during mm. the course of the day. Although there is a, a, a good dose of drama, you walk up through this yeah. uh, rather beautiful kind of hedged path up this ramp into this space um, that is quite claustrophobic and, and quite formal so you're set up for something but you, there's anticipation before you get here. So we're here in the woods and we're standing in front of Rachel Whiteread's Houghton Hut. She is familiar for uh, casting the inside of forgotten or overlooked spaces and this is exactly what she's done here. We're standing in front of a block of concrete which recalls the interior surfaces of a very humble hut. Well you walk through the woodland and you come into this glade and you see this grey concrete uncanny object and this is very familiar uh, way of Rachel Whiteread making sculpture namely this casting process of taking pre-existing structures or objects and then casting them and so the casting is a copy but it's not exact mm. because positive elements become negative and vice versa so there is a sort of subtle alteration of the original and it sits here really as a sort of ghostly presence mm. doesn't it i think it's rather beautiful actually mm. i think there's something very odd i mean it's a very simple thing to do to to cast the space that a building makes but she does that and she draws our attention to very mundane ordinary mm. spaces and then they become less mundane and less ordinary because we notice the places that we occupy that we live in mm. that we use and it echoes the traditional casting process of sculpture and traditionally in bronze. But this Houghton Hut becomes a commemoration really of all of the uses of mm. this uh, former hut uh, that is absent but nevertheless remains as a kind of simulacra of the original. Thank you for watching this film on the Art Channel about the permanent sculpture collection at Houghton Hall in Norfolk. If you've enjoyed this film, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow us on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram and Facebook.